Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. We do full-length car reviews each and every week, and halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars Answering Your Questions. We've spun it off into its own thing. We're up at number 69. Mm -hmm. How do you get the questions in? Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post out asking for questions. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted, and we start the show. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. You might notice we're not in a regular car. We're in the Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. Your questions from Instagram. When will the ID2 come to Canada? Mm. That's a good question. Um, Still not officially announced. No, it's not. Now, the ID GTI concept uh was put out there which looks pretty cool so i did a little bit of digging I just, wanted, just before we jump yes. into that so coming this year will be the buzz that's the van yeah and then the id7 which is the lift back kind of like the arteon version new version electric car so those are the two electric ones we're going to get this year yep. i think that um that would be a great slot into their lineup to have that for the following year well i just think they need a more inexpensive electric vehicle so road and track spoke with vw group of america ceo and he's pushing hard to bring the id gti to mm. north america but it's unlikely this vehicle will be all-wheel drive he says which may be a sticking point to some in north america wanting more all-wheel drive he also said vw is committed to launching a less expensive ev but whether it's going to be the id gti or something completely different, you know, called something different. He says they are committed to bringing something a little bit less expensive. So read so between good. the lines, the ID2 will come. Why is Mazda, Mazda, pronounced differently in the U.S. versus Canada? Same goes for the Kia Sportage or Sportage. I never knew this before watching your channel. Okay, oh, so um, what's shocking to me is in the uh, U.S. education system, they mm. don't teach that the last letter of the alphabet is pronounced Z yeah. in the United States. In other English-speaking countries, so the UK, Australia, Canada, it's the letter Z. So we speak the King's English, or we're supposed to in Canada, um, which is the letter Z. So it isn't even Mazda. It isn't even Mazda. The real name is Matsuta. Hmm. It's Matsuta. This is kind of a bit of an issue for us, too, because we're on YouTube and we reach out to many different people around the world. Um, and we pronounce things differently here in Canada. We were on a trip with Kia. It was for the EV6. And I was talking to uh, one of the head guys from Kia USA. And uh, he says to me, you Canadians, you don't pronounce it sportage. And I said, no, we pronounce it sportage. He goes, I really like that. He yeah. says, I might start saying sportage. Okay, so we have two major influences in Canada. First mm -hmm. of all, in the English side, we adopt more of the British pronunciations, and especially the last letter, which is Z. Yeah. And we also have a big chunk of our country is French, the province of Quebec. Mm -hmm. And they would never say sportage. No. They would say sportage. Or I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's how they would say it. But the French influence in our country makes it easy for them to say it's got to be sportage mm -hmm. and mazda and mazda it's different some of our u.s viewers say when i say mazda it's like someone taking their nails down a chalkboard i don't think it sounds that bad well the other one is like you guys like in the u.s mazda well the other thing is like when any any car that has a Z or Ooh. a Z in the name, like a ZDX or a ZDX, it see it just sounds weird to us to say Z and it sounds mm -hmm. weird for you to, to hear, hear us say Z. Yeah. So that's why often we'll say it twice and it just keeps everybody on side. People get their back up about this. They go, you guys are Canadian. You should say it the Canadian way. And then the Americans go, I hate the way you Canadians say it. So yeah. we say it both ways. Yes. And we said to Toyota when they launched the BZ4X. Why? Why the, do you do this to us? Yeah. And I was like, you're killing us. You're killing us. And they're like, why? Because you got to remember we're dealing with Toyota Canada, not the U.S. Okay. So it's for Mazda. It's actually Matsuta. Yes, That's or just you... say Mazda, Mazda. <laughs> say whatever you I'm like. I'm going to start saying the Japanese way. I think it all way. sounds great. Matsuta. I'm going to start saying that from now on. God, they're not gonna, people aren't going to like that either. Anyway, say it the way you love it. And move on. And we'll say it the way we love it. 
Hi, love your car reviews. Thank you. And this new segment. I am looking for a six to seven seater SUV gas or hybrid with nice interior. Budget is 50000 I really like the new Santa Fe, but not sure if it's a reliable option. Looking for your advice and other recommendations. Well, that's that's an interesting choice is the mm. Santa Fe. You know what? I saw the Santa Fe uh, where we pick up our, our cars. Yeah. I don't love the look of it. I think it looks like a, it does look like a Ford Flex to me. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's an interesting option. And it's a hybrid. Um, but six to seven passengers, you know, we're, Andrew, we're going right back to the family of Toyota. Yeah. You can get a Highlander mm -hmm. or a Grand Highlander for that yeah. kind of money. I guess it depends how uh, big of a six to seven passenger you want. I mean, there's all different sizes. 50000 price point. I'm not sure if that's Canadian dollars or American dollars. Obviously, your, mother, your money would go further if it was U.S. dollars. But things like the Kia Sorento are a good option. Mm -hmm. That's six to seven passenger. Toyota Highlander, as Zach mentioned, Subaru Ascent, Honda Pilot, Volkswagen Atlas is a biggie. And if you like something small, how about the Mitsubishi Outlander? Yeah, I'm, you know? I, was, I was going more for hybrids. It's probably not a bad way if you're going to buy a new car to sort of future-proof. Uh, mm -hmm. I think resale value of hybrids is going to be better in the long Same. run. So I think that if you're going to consider one, hybrids may be the way to go. It's also hard to get. Very hard to get. Love your show. With German cars not having a regular hybrid option, would a used German PHEV offer the same value as a used Japanese regular hybrid? The problem is the first batch, you got to remember that we're in sort of Gen 1 of all these plugins. The range on the German plugins, whether it's the Q5, mm -hmm. um, the X3 that's no longer sold in the US, but was so you could find a used one and so on, the range is abysmal. Yeah. So, first of all, you're going to have a battery that's older and it could have degradation, and it's just not worth it. I think getting a hybrid is better. Yeah, even the Lincoln Corsair plug in hybrid, which we really like, the range is is quite low. It's the same for all of them. They will improve as the second generation model comes out, but I would stick with a hybrid. I wouldn't probably go for an older plug-in hybrid in the German category or luxury category. Now you could go with an NX plug-in hybrid or a RX plug-in hybrid. The range with Toyota Lexus models have all been very good, so I would feel more confident with that I'm, brand. I'm going to be curious to see the values of these vehicles vehicles in the mm. used market. Yeah. Plug-in hybrids that are five, seven years old with the low range that they initially came with, yeah. are they just not going to be worth that much? I'm guessing they're going to get hit with uh, depreciation faster than others. And we're so. seeing that with electric cars too. So as much as new technology is kind of being pushed on us, mm -hmm. it might not be the best financial decision. No. Not at all. I have a 2024 Mazda 3. Mazuta. Hatch GT. Front wheel drive on order. My friends all ask the same question. Isn't the all wheel drive turbo the best option for this little car? I think 191 horsepower is quite enough. What well, do you think? Well, you are right and your friends are wrong. Yeah. Uh, the thing is the, the all wheel drive sucks gas. It's not that great. To be honest with you, it's not that great to drive. No. I mean it has it has more power, but it's not like it's not like driving a GTI kind no, of fun. It's, no. It you, you got the right one. It's more refined that um turbocharged Mazda 3. It's interesting because I remember when I drove it for the first time, I was kind of looking for that hot hatch feel and it doesn't that. have it. It doesn't mean that that was Mazda's goal was to have that. It is very refined and offers lots of power. But I'm so impressed with that non-turbo engine in all of them, the CX-5, the CX-50, the Mazda 3. Uh, I would just stick with the non-turbo and save a yeah. few bucks. Every time we drive that that engine yeah. with their models, uh, I'm not sure if you're getting the manual or the six speed, uh, you're going to love it. It's a very nice car and it's a good choice and you're right and your friends are wrong and take this clip and send it to me. <laughs> Will the next generation 4Runner be available in a hybrid and how will the pricing slot in between the Grand Highlander and the new expensive Land Cruiser? Mm. I bet you the 4Runner is going to be exclusively a hybrid yep. just like the Land yep. Cruiser. I, That's our feeling. Yeah and I don't think we're going to have to wait long. We don't know for sure. Um, we're going to an event soon where they're going to unveil something for mm -hmm. us. They're not telling, they're not going to tell us what it is. They'll tell us maybe a day before. We think um, it is we, though. We think it's the 4Runner because mm -hmm. if you think 
the look at the cadence of what they've done. So they've done um, the full size tu- uh, the full size tundra. Mm-hmm. Then they brought out uh, the sequoia. Then they brought out Tacoma, um, and they brought out Land Cruiser and the Lexus GX, all built on the same platform. Where there's one piece missing. And that is in the body on frame family, the Forerunner. Yeah. And I suspect that Forerunner is the one we're going to see. I don't know. We're going to have to wait. Uh, it's not too long now, but yeah, it ain't going to be cheap. Well, the fact that the Land Cruiser is only available with a hybrid, I think that's what's happening with the Forerunner. Yeah. I mean, it's all about emissions. The regulations are so strict. Toyota's got to start thinking about all this. We already see that they're eliminating V8s going with the V6 or they're going with a turbocharged 4. Yeah, it's RAV4. All changing. RAV4, the speculation is probably I would go all in on Vegas on this. It's only going to be sold with yeah, hybrid. I think they so. have a a new battery plant they're building in the US which is going to supply those batteries. Um, that's going to be all hybrid. And okay, so these are Canadian dollars cuz we live in Canada eh? with the letter Z. Um, <laughs> um, uh, the Land Cruiser starts around $70,000. Yeah, it's it's freaking expensive. So I'm guessing the Forerunner is going to be fifty five to sixty. i I'm feeling like it's going to be more than that. A hybrid? Mm-hmm. A Forerunner? Could be. I think and, it's more. And, the, and it'll be made in Japan. It's not going to be... Because I suspected that it was going to go to the Tacoma... Um, built on the Tacoma platform, and it's going to be built alongside the Tacoma in, uh, in, in the U.S. And I got the big thumbs down from Toyota on that. They said, mm-hmm. if... And they never tell you. No. They said, if the Forerunner were to be coming, uh, it would not be made in the U.S. So there you go. I think that it's going to be priced over $60,000. i am thinking 65000 Canadian. I, I'm guessing I'm guessing fifty nine. That seems just too expensive. All right, let's just make bet on it right now. Yeah. Uh, too inexpensive. Oh, that's a weird handshake. Come on. Well, there we go. Are you, oh, you going to lose your spot? Yes. Okay, let so me do it this way then. There. <laughs> there we go. Let's see who's the winner on that. Zach says under 60. No, no, I say it's going to be it's going to be uh, uh, 59.99. It's going to be 60 grand. Okay, so under 60. 59.99. And you say 65. So I'm going to say over 60. How about that? Over 60, under 60. You said 65. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm saying 65. I'm saying 65 it's going to start at. That's my feeling. You, U.S., we have no idea. And also, you know, you think about the Forerunner <laughs> today. How popular is it? The resale value is incredible. Toyota knows they can charge extra for this Forerunner. You just wait and see. Hi, I have my name on a 2024 Envision Avenir that is coming out with a refresh. My question is, is the X-T4 worth the $14,000 jump? I live in a small town, which makes it hard to get out and test out a lot of cars. Yeah, that is tricky. Okay, so you've done the research on that, Andrea. Is it worth the $14,000 more? Well, I actually haven't really dug super deep into it. Um, The thing is, is that... One of them offers a sportier feel to that, and that is the X-T4. It's going to have way more tech in it, too. Yeah, more tech. But what I find about the Buick is that it's really smooth and refined and not sporty. Anyway, yeah. But if you like that feel, I would lean towards the Buick. If you want a, a subcompact SUV that's kind of fun to drive and you just, you know, zip around those corners and the new X-T4 has that beautiful screen inside, I think that you would rather go to the X-T4, but it all comes down to budget. Okay, there's two lines of X-T4. They have luxury and sport. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, I like the sport because you're trying to get a little bit more out of it. Between the two, I would go Cadillac. I love the XT4. I remember when we reviewed it, looking forward to this new one. It's coming into the press fleet it. soon. I yeah. booked it. It's already booked. I just remember when we drove the outgoing model. I just We have two vehicles a week. We have our own vehicles as well, but that's the one I kept choosing to go into all day, every day. I just had a lot of fun with it, so I can only imagine... I like this the new one is going to be I great. I like the styling of Cadillac better. Do you have the Kia Carnival hybrid fuel economy numbers? I have two daughters in car seats and I'm itching for a hybrid minivan. 
we do not have those figures. But Toyota will sell you a hybrid minivan. <laughs> well, good luck getting one. Can't get one. Sienna. Um, there's some reports out of Korea that states it's not as good as the Toyota Sienna hybrid mm-hmm. for fuel economy. So it's not going to be as good. Whether that is true or not, that is coming out of Korea. But, that's, but the numbers still look pretty good. But that's the case with all of the hybrids. The mm-hmm. Toyota hybrids are the most efficient because they have an ECVT where the Hyundai Kia or the Hyundai Group uses uh, a dual clutch and a turbo engine and they are great to drive but Mm -hmm. they just don't get the same kind of fuel economy. No. So, you know, that that's kind of the thing you have to decide on. Some people don't want an ECVT. Some prefer an automatic transmission. But the fuel economy isn't as good, but it's still good. It's still a hybrid. So the old Carnival uh, 3.3 liter V6 is going to get better fuel economy than that. Yes. RAV4 gas or hybrid. I've done the math and it would take me a while to make up the difference in price on gas savings, even though it isn't that far apart. But miles per gallon isn't that far apart either. Is the hybrid a better car to drive? Love your show. Keep up the good work. So the answer is yes. yes. The hybrid is a better car. It's quieter. Uh, it's more satisfying to drive. Mm-hmm. Um, the regular gas model has an eight-speed automatic, and the and the hybrid has an eCVT, as we just talked about. But actually, because it's electrified, it's a little more satisfying with the low-end torque. But part of the calculation that you have, and I'm glad that you ran the numbers, and we mm-hmm. talked about this on our last questions, mm-hmm. Coffee and Cars. You really do need to run the numbers to see if it's worth it to buy a new technology car, hybrid, plug-in, or EV, yeah. if it works for you. Part of the equation, though, is the fact resale value. And the resale value of the hybrid will be higher than the gas model, especially if Toyota gets rid of the gas model. Um, It's going to be all hybrid, and that's what people want. All I can say is one thing. The gas model RAV4 is way too loud. After a while, that sound just drained on me, and we only had it for a week. I would go for the hybrid, hands down. I would go for a lower trim hybrid if I was you know, worried about pricing. Toyota offers tons of different hybrid trims. There is one for everybody's budget. So for me, hybrid, 100%. Well, just a quick shout out to uh, Gino who lives in Quebec. Mm-hmm. He has been on the hunt for a Toyota RAV4 hybrid for months, mm. maybe over a year. Gosh. And it's finally come yeah. in white. So he's pretty happy. It takes a while. Congratulations. And, and in his case, it was somebody who didn't want it, right? Yep. Gave it up. Mm-hmm. They had it on order and then they called Gino. Resale value, RAV4 hybrid. You guys are the best automotive YouTube blog, period. Thank you. Mm, like My that. question is, what three-row luxury SUV would you recommend for hauling around frail and elderly parents? They have a difficult time getting in and out of my Q7, looking to replace as the lease ran out any SUV that's low clearance or has a suspension that lowers? I've got one in my head, Andrea. Mm -hmm. So you want to go more like car-like? I would say the Acura MDX. That's what I've got. Acura MDX. I did a little digging. I really looked into this for you. Um, I couldn't find one. You can thank Andrea. (laughs) Say thank you, Andrea, for doing all that digging. So we Uh, want like, like, I I just want to, I just want to give an example of the way this works. Mm. Hockey games on. So we have two sofas in our living room. Yeah. Andrea's sofa, she's lying out on that. Zach's sofa, lying out on that. I'm watching the hockey game. I have my laptop open. I'm scrolling through Twitter. Andrea <laughs> is scrolling through answering all your questions. Like I she am. just, see, I can't, you look over there. She's either looking at shoes. I get that. Or clothes. Or, or, or clothes. Yeah. Or she's looking up car websites. I do a lot of uh, research for sure, just to help you guys. It's all for you. you to make so the you, right choice. You can thank Andrea for that because she was on the sofa, lying there. Zach always says to me, "What are you doing over there?" Like, Ed. let it go, put it and down. Then I'm like, no, 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 no. The Canucks, just, the Canucks no, have tied it up. Let's no. watch the game. I actually really love being distracted. A, a quick story. We were on a plane, and I wasn't sitting beside Zach. We just couldn't get seats together for whatever she reason. She sat next to a better-looking guy. So. so I sat next to a guy, and I'm doing research. We're heading to an event, and I'm you know, doing research on the vehicle for us. And uh, I also have a movie going at the same time. And I'm plugging along, and I'm working. Boom, 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 boom. And the guy next to me goes like this. Tap, tap, tap. And I look over, and I go, oh, Can I buy hi. you a drink? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Can I buy you a drink? He says to me, 
I noticed that you're really working hard here and you're looking things up. So like he was really looking at what I was doing, which is slightly odd. Uh, but he says, I noticed that you're watching a movie too. Like, how do you do that at the same time? And I said, actually, I worked really, I work really well multitasking. So I like to have a movie on, on the plane and I do my work even at home. I've got the TV going and I'm doing all this research. I don't know why it's just how I made up. So okay, what was uh, the question again? Question was lower ground clearance. Oh yeah. So, so I said MDX. So, so you looked it up. Yeah. So Acura MDX. And every time I get in that vehicle, it's quite easy to get Very in and easy. out of. Flat floor at the back. Um, and then also it really feels like you're driving a larger sedan. So why don't you give that one a try? I am a little bit surprised about the Q7 because mm. I always found that one too easy to get in and out of, but um, obviously for your elderly parents, it's not that great. Oh, Try Andrea, the MDX. The rare spotted owl. I know, the Prime. A Toyota RAV4 Prime just went by. Woo. And I knew right away it was you a Prime because I could hear it. I could hear it. Okay, one more oh, question. Oh, Commander, we're going long here. Okay, one more. You guys are it's fire. It's always one I more. I wanted to say it because he's got the fire emoji. You guys are fire. Okay, I'll he take gave that. us three. Toyota Corolla Hatchback Hybrid. Is it ever coming to North America? Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Oh, it won't. It won't come until the next generation. Yeah. So I think that it probably is, and I suspect that we're going to go down the exact same road we've done with yeah. all of the other Toyotas. It will only come as hybrid. Yeah. And we'll have to wait for the refresh. So the thinking is 2026. Yeah. So you can get a, just a regular. What I would do sedan. is yeah. get a sedan now and flip into the other thing. Is a lot of people don't realize is they're not exactly the same car. Mm -hmm. The rear seat leg room and the space in the back of the hatch is quite a bit smaller mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than the regular sedan. The sedan, it's not a hatch, I get it, but that really is the one to get. Yeah, but the hatch is cute as a button. Every time I see one, I just love it. I love the look of it. Yeah, and... And, uh, and I would assume it's probably going to get the fifth generation hybrid yeah. system. All that, all the upgrades. The Camry hybrid is the first one to get that fifth generation. Yeah, we're not going to... coming. We're, I, that's the way they're going. I think Toyota mm -hmm. is just going to go... When new model iterations come out, it's going to be hybrid and, and no regular gas. So and you, you know what? Wait, they're you smart wait. because they can't make enough of them. Nope. They know what, they know what hybrids and plug-in hybrids. I'm still was, waiting for the uh, Highlander plug-in hybrid. Do you think hybrid. Akio Toyota is in Japan with his bald cat like this, going like this? Certainly <laughs> is. I have the last laugh. Who likes it? Like, and it goes like this. Cat. Mm, I want uh, one million hybrids. Mm -hmm. Dr. There's something Eva? about the furless cat that I like. I don't know I don't why. Want a furless cat. He thinks they're the ugliest things, but there's something about the furless cat. I got a great joke about this, Andrea, but we're going to wrap it up now yeah, okay. because. Because yeah, why, Zach? It's uh, time. Yeah, because it's time, and I would I would say something off color, <laughs> and it's time to go. Anyway, if you want to get a question and follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post out once we gather our questions. The post is deleted. So no sleeping in for you. Get your questions in early. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Are you sure you want to squeeze one more question in, Andrea? Oh, you're just going to say another question. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>